So now let's go to the second example. Okay, so what we have is a very similar program, right? We'd simply reorder the first line with the second. So let's call it. You would expect the same return value to be outputted, right? So let's see if we just move this here. And if we run it, we get 20 again. Okay. Why? Because it only matters what is the value once you call it. Right. So now let's try to evaluate the same program using our lambda f semantics. So we start with the empty environment and we have to evaluate our function, right? So what do we do? Okay, we're going to start, we're going to, we can only apply this rule for define. What do we do first? We have a define and what is our expression is a lambda. And as we recall, in evaluating a lambda should return a closure that captures the environment that was used upon construction. So in this case, the empty environment. So the result of V is going to be a closure with the empty environment. What is the whole expression returning? It's going to return void. And what is the environment being returned? It's an environment that now assigns B to this lambda or the closure that resulted from evaluating this lambda. So let's see. So that's exactly what we have. We have B on the left, now in the environment, and we have the closure that we started that captured the empty environment. Um, so why do we have that? Well, we use the rule for define, as we were mentioning before, and then we use the rule for lambda, which returns a closure that is not here in this slide, right? But we're applying uh, internally this rule, uh, which is doing the evaluation of the lambda. Okay, and this represents the empty environment. Okay, so now what we do, let's evaluate A with the value 20, and now it shouldn't be too surprising. What we do is we extend the environment with the binding of A assigned to 20, and again return void. So uh, now our environment has B assigned to disclosure, and when we evaluate 20, we use that environment, should return 20 again, and now we extend A with 20. Finally, we go to the function call with b, uh, function b called with parameter 1, argument 1. So what do we do now? Let's see. We're going to have to do this thing, the function, uh, function evaluation. And let's recall, actually, where is it? Here it is. So if you recall the rule for uh, function evaluation, uh, function application, which is the same for um, lambda e, you see that we evaluate e of f. What is e of f? Is going to be this b, right? e of f is going to be the function, the variable b. We have to look up, so we're going to get clo this closure, right? So the closure that we have here is going to be E of B is going to be the empty environment, right? And the lambda is going to be this lambda. It's going to be this lambda. It's the same. So then we evaluate the argument, which is 1. So 1 is going to return 1 here, right? Because it's a value. And finally, what we're going to do is we're going to take the body of the, of the lambda, which is A, and we're going to evaluate that with the new environment. Uh, what is the environment? It's the environment of B, so therefore it's this empty environment, right? Um, e of B is going to be the one from the closure, so it's going to be this environment where we where we assign what? Y to 1, because we pass 1 as uh, the argument. So we're going to replace the parameter Y with the argument 1. So that's what we're doing here. Uh, and what we're doing is we're looking up B. But note that B is not defined in the environment. 
sorry, note that A is not defined in the environment. So if we try to implement this, we would have a problem, right? Because once we are evaluating um, A, right? A is not defined in the environment. The only thing we do, E of D is the empty environment, and we only are assigning Y to one. So A is not in E of D, which means when you evaluate A, you get a variable undefined error which is a problem. Right? So what this is saying is that the semantics that I'm showing here of lambda f does not match the execution of the program. I ran the program and it worked fine. It should return 20, right? I executed this program that matches the program that we're executing, but the result is completely different. Here we got 20, but our semantics does not capture this behavior. So what we need to be able to do is actually need to once we execute, what we need to do is to somehow capture, not give a snapshot, but somehow have a pointer to this whole thing, right? We need to somehow not capture the snapshot of the current variables, but the, uh, the placeholder of variable uh, of the environment that is currently happening. So we'll see a bit more what we need to do in our next video in our next lecture actually. So have a nice one.